Good morning, welcome back to another video on the channel. So we are at the quarterfinal stage of the men's tennis Olympic singles. We have four fantastic matches lined up today and a thrilling end to what has been a very good tournament so far to see who picks up the gold medal on Sunday. So the first match I'm going to preview in the quarterfinals is a repeat of the Wimbledon quarterfinal between Carlos Alcaraz against Tommy Paul. Now, coming into the Olympics, I didn't pick Carlos Alcaraz to win the gold medal, just purely for one reason, and that was fatigue. Alcaraz is still a very young player, and to do back-to-back -back French Open and Wimbledon titles is an incredible feat, but also very physically and mentally taxing. I wasn't sure how he would cope with returning back to the French Open, transitioning back to clay after such a long and demanding two weeks at Wimbledon. He's undoubtedly the best player in the world at the moment on the men's side, winning back-to-back -back majors on two different surfaces. Incredible achievement. But I just wasn't sure whether he'd be able to come here and perform his best. We know he has struggled with slight muscle issues and the forehand, forearm issue previously this year. And I don't think we've seen the best of Alcaraz so far. He did look like he physically struggled a bit against Safi Ulin in the third round. Went out in doubles last night with Rafael Nadal. So it's going to be a big ask, in my opinion, for Alcaraz to win this title when you've still got the likes of Zverev and Djokovic in the draw, who are also very, very good on clay. This is a repeat of the Wimbledon quarterfinal, and in that quarterfinal, we saw Tommy Paul play lights out tennis for the first hour and a half, where he led 7-5 to love. Tommy Paul's having a fantastic season. You know, he won in Queens before Wimbledon, carried that form into Wimbledon, playing fantastically well and pushing Alcaraz all the way. He's got a fantastic all-round game. You could argue he's playing top 10 tennis, especially this year, when he seems to be transforming his game to new heights and new levels and playing very consistently and consistently getting to quarterfinals of major tournaments. I think the clear matchup suits Alcaraz rather than Paul. And I think, you know, if Tommy Paul can't beat Carlos Alcaraz on grass, which is his favourite surface, then I'm not sure how he's going to beat Alcaraz on clay. The fact it is over three sets probably suits Paul. You know, Paul showed at Wimbledon that he's capable of matching and more than matching Alcaraz for an hour, an hour and a half. That could be enough to get this match won. Whereas Alcaraz at Wimbledon, once he problem solved, once he got into his groove, the five set match allows Alcaraz time to find his rhythm. And once he got momentum in that match, it was very difficult for Tommy Paul to wrestle it back. I think the slow conditions here will allow Alcaraz to use his variety, his speed, his counter punch and we know how brilliant his backhand is forever improving but is Alcaraz in the same physical condition as he was at Wimbledon? Probably not it's a tough match to call because I don't think Alcaraz has played particularly brilliant so far this week from what I've seen him, he definitely struggled against Safi and even though he pulled through in straight sets going out in doubles against with Nadal He's had a very, very long demand and tough few months, albeit very successful. It's still tough on the body and he's still very young. I think for Paul to win this, he just needs to come out and play absolutely light out tennis as he did against Alcaraz at Wimbledon for an hour and a half and that could be enough to get it won. He should take huge confidence from the way he played in those two sets against Alcaraz. But I just feel like the clay really favours Alcaraz in this matchup and he's got that winning momentum. He's got the ability to really dig deep get the crowd on his side, being a French Open champion now. And he's just a player that is in the very, very top of his game. And he can almost stroll through matches and just peak at the right moments and play his best tennis in the biggest moments, which is so fantastic at doing so. And I think Alcaraz will win this one in two very, very tough sets. Next match is match of the round for me in terms of how well these players have both played in 2024 between Alexander Zverev and Lorenzo Massetti. Neither player have dropped a set yet going into the quarterfinal matchup and Zverev leads the head-to-head -head just 1-0, which I was surprised about. So Zverev reached the final of the French Open in Hamburg. He won the Italian Open in Rome this year. He's been in fantastic form, very, very consistent. Backhand is as good as it's ever been. Serving brilliantly well, attacking the net with great conviction, volleying well. Did have a slight issue with his knee, going into Hamburg, but that seems to be behind him now. He seems to be playing his best tennis, and as I've said, he's yet to drop a set this week, even though he did slightly struggle against Popperin in round three, particularly in an open set when he started very slowly. I was lucky enough to go out to Rome this year and watch Alexander Zverev, and I was absolutely blown away by his ability on clay to particularly absorb pace, 
his defence up the backhand side, the way he attacks the net, backs up his serve with heavy ground strokes. It was an honour to watch Zverev in Rome and that's why I picked him to win the French Open title. He obviously got to the final and you could argue he should have won, but threw away his opportunity to allow Alcaraz to win in five sets. Lorenzo Massetti is also having a fantastic 2024. Reached the final in Queens, reached the final in Umag on clay as well. Reached the Wimbledon semi-final, which lost to Novak Djokovic. Took two sets off Djokovic at the French Open as well before losing in five. So I think the fact that massetti has got this big match winning experience now, he's pushed, pushed Djokovic at two majors, it must give him an immense amount of confidence. And we saw Massetti use his var variations excellently well against Taylor Fritz at Wimbledon. I'm sure that's something that he'll try again against Verev with really using the chip return, lots of slices, particularly on the backhand side, look to take pace off, look to counter punch, force errors from Zverev. Um, but Zverev is a very good counter puncher. He's got an elite backhand, he absorbs pace very well, he's got lots of experience on clay, particularly winning form on clay as well. And these two are brilliantly poised I feel for what would be a classic match they're both very good clear core players they both had very good results in 2024 and it could come down to who plays the best tennis in the biggest moments I feel like that the fact that both had big results recently it's a huge opportunity for both and with Sinner out it's the draw sort of opened up Alcaraz looks like he could be struggling physically we know Djokovic hasn't played anywhere near his best so far in 2024, particularly on clay. So it could, the, goal, the gold medal could come to a player like Zverev and Massetti, who are very confident on clay and playing well in 2024. I feel like we're rediscovering his form from Roman Paris in Paris, which he had in 2024, which has seen him have a very successful year so far. And I think Zverev wins this one in three very high quality sets. Moving on now to Kasparud against Felix Orja Aliasim. So Aliasim beat Daniel Medvedev yesterday in straight sets. And I think that was a huge win mentally for Aliasim. I think he's a player that when he came through, he had huge potential. Many people thought he was going to get to top five and win majors at a very early age. But he hasn't quite delivered on that potential for a few different reasons. He hasn't beaten back-to-back -to -back top 10 players since 2022 and this offers him a huge opportunity today to correct that and reach a semi-final of Tennis Olympics. I just feel like Ali Hussain, he's got the game, he just needs to be more consistent with it and I think if he could have a huge breakthrough performance against someone like Kasper Ruud or a Djokovic or an Alcaraz at a major event like the Tennis Olympics or a Grand Slam, then it could really give him that belief to kick on and fulfill his potential because I do feel like it's still there for him. Rude has been fully focused on winning gold in the singles. He skipped a lot of grass court events this year to presumably prime himself for this event. He's a two-time finalist at Roland Garros. He's a clay court specialist. He has won a title on clay already in 2024 in Geneva, reached a semi-final of the French Open. So, Although I was very impressed with Ali Asim yesterday, he played very well. We know that Medvedev's not at home on clay. Playing Kasper Ruud is a whole different ball game to playing Medvedev on a clay court. I feel like Ruud's got more experience on clay. He's got an excellent record at Roland Garros. Very consistent and I feel like his game style is more suited to clay than Ali Asim's is. And over the years, it's just been very difficult to trust Ali Asim and particularly back up big performances with another one and I'm going to go for Kasparu to win this one in straight sets final matchup is Novak Djokovic against the finest it's a pass and this tennis Olympics title is about the only title that Djokovic hasn't won in his career and had he already won an Olympic gold I don't think he would be playing here we know Djokovic had the knee surgery after the French Open reached the Wimbledon final and I think that was very demanding on the body we know he didn't play anywhere near his best in the Wimbledon final. And I think transitioning back into clay at 38 years old after knee surgery a couple of months ago is a difficult decision. But when you haven't won gold and, you know, Sin is out the draw, Djokovic is still reaching the final of Wimbledon after surgery. you probably come here fully believe that he could win gold. And it's something that he's never going to turn down the opportunity to do. 
He hasn't played men's or mixed doubles, so it shows that Djokovic is fully focused on winning the singles title. That's what he feels is his best opportunity. So Djokovic hasn't played anywhere near his best in 2024 on any surface, but particularly on clay, he hasn't played a lot due to the injury in the French Open and early exits at Rome, for example. Sitsipas has had success against Djokovic on clay in the past. He led 2 0 in the French Open final in 2021 before Djokovic came back to win three sets to two. And Sitsipas has won a title in Monaco on clay early this year, but overall had a very disappointing 2024. He's only reached one major quarter final, which was in a French Open, I believe, in which he lost in straight sets to Carlos Alcaraz. He's out of the men's and mixed doubles, so now we can just focus on trying to win the men's singles gold. I feel like this is a good opportunity for it to pass over three sets on clay. Um, not sure if it to pass is playing well enough at this current moment. I've got the elite wins in 2024, which can give him that confidence and trust in his game to beat a player like Djokovic at the moment. But we've seen it to pass have success against Djokovic on clay in the past. And if he can somehow rediscover the form that he's shown in, in the past years, then perhaps he could win this one. Much prediction-wise for this one, I wouldn't be surprised by any result, to be honest, because Djokovic has not been particularly trustworthy in 2024. He's had some very good performances. He's had some very, very poor performances. Only reached one final this year, which is pretty much unheard of for, his, for a player of his calibre. But I think the key stat here is Novak Djokovic has won the last nine meetings against Stefano Tsitsipas, um, which is a huge amount. And I'm going to predict Novak Djokovic to come through this one in three sets. So thank you for watching. And if you would like to like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. I will be covering lots more of events later on this year. And I do do this YouTube channel to improve my skills, shine more light on the sport and hopefully achieve the dream of working in tennis media one day. So thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.